Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So today we're gonna be doing part 3 of Password Vault. I know I haven't been here for a while. It's been around like 8 months. Um, I've seen your comments and everything and I'll try to start uploading more frequently like twice a week. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So this is gonna be the end result right here. So obviously right, uh, now we can reset the password. You just enter the recovery key. Boom, and then you can choose a new password and that will give you a new recovery key which you can save wherever uh, you want to and then now uh, the passwords are actually encrypted with SHA-256 so it's fully encrypted and safe even your info here is unaccessible without having your master password I'll show you guys later but it's also encrypted on the database and uh, yeah so let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome to the coding part of this video. So uh, let's get straight into it. So these are going to be our new imports. I'll put them in the description since these are quite long. But basically, in general, UUID is for the recovery key. Piper clip is to be able to copy the recovery key. Base64 is um, be able to like encrypt the data, so websites, password, usernames. Uh, OS, well that's just your OS. And then the rest of this is just from Fernet for encrypting data. So, um, first thing we're gonna do is let's change this MD5 encryption since uh, i didn't realize that when i did this md5 actually kind of sucks let's just change this to sha 256 uh right there there we go boom now we have this as 256 so it's way better now next what we can do is we can start adding the recovery key so what you want to do is you want to go to the first time screen and go to the save password right and then right here you're gonna do um you're gonna add all right so you're gonna add an sql function it's gonna be equal to delete from master password where id is equal to one so basically this is just to delete uh the old master password when we create a new one and uh, next we're gonna do cursor.execute sql so this just ex executes the command basically uh, next what you want to do is after this hashed password let's create a key which is going to be the recovery key so key is equal to string and then uuid dot uuid4 so this just generates basically a random key dot hex and then what you want to do with this is we want to encrypt the key with our SHA-256 so it's as protected as our password so the recovery key is equal to hash hash password uh, without the ed sorry hash password so the function that we made and then you just want to do key.encode utf8 utf8 <clears throat> sorry about that so basically yeah this will basically just give us the recovery key uh, next what we want to do is in the password db we want to insert password and recovery key. then in here what we can do is we can move this and change this to recovery key. boom so now we're inserting the hashed password and the recovery key into the database uh, now what you want to do is up here in the master password you want to add an entry so right now there's password text not null you want to add recovery key sorry about that uh, text not no boom here we go 
Uh, so now when we save our password, when we create a new password, we save a recovery key with it. Oh yeah, also right here, add the second question mark. That's my bad, I forgot. So we add the second recovery key with it. And yeah. So now what we want to do is instead of going straight to the vault, the vault screen, we want to create a new screen because we want to be able to show the recovery key uh, to the user and we want them to be able to, you know, save it. So let's do this. We're going to pass in the key here because we don't want to fetch the database since it's, it's going to be encrypted. We'll change this to recovery screen. So here uh, you can just copy the first time screen, copy the whole function. And then what you want to change is uh, you want to change the choose a master password to save this key to be able to recover account or whatever you want to like change it to. Uh, and then next what we need to do is we can take off the text entry, keep this, take off this text entry, right? And then here text, just put it as key. There we go. Uh, and then what you want to do is, okay. So here you want to make a function def copy key. Boom. Uh, so this is basically just going to copy the key to your keyboard. So let's do Piper clip dot copy dot copy and then we get the text from the label so we do label one dot c get and then text boom there we go so then this will just get the text and what we want to do is we want to make this button uh, copy key and command copy key there we go now let's make a new button and this button is just gonna be done and for this button let's make a new function right here if done and this is just gonna bring you to the vault screen so basically we just adding an extra extra screen so that they can copy the key and yeah so there we go, there's the full screen code if you guys need it. Also one thing, uh, if you guys go down to login screen here, copy this just to make sure that we delete that we delete the widgets before creating a new screen. Boom, add it here and add it there. Alright, so now we're able to save the recovery key, see the recovery key, now we have to add a reset password button. So if you go to the login screen, you can go down to uh, the buttons, buttons, add a new button, let's say this, or just copy it, instead of submit, go reset, reset password boom there we go uh, and then we'll change the command to reset password and we have to make a new function so let's do that reset password now what we're gonna do here actually is we're gonna go to a new screen just so we can put in the key and reset the reset the, the password so let's put it above here let's do dev reset screen parentheses two dots perfect um now what you want to do on this reset screen is you want to same as earlier let's just copy this so we have the geometry and everything already done uh, now we need all right just bring this down change this text to enter recovery key boom there we go now just make a new text entry there we go um now this you can you can only show stars if you want to hide the key 
I prefer not to just so that if you're typing it out instead of like just copy pasting it's easier so I prefer not having the stars and then uh, in this label you just want to have window I'll explain why in a second and then here we want to make a new function get recovery key get recovery key so basically this is just going to check if the recovery key is correct or not so we do recovery key check is equal to hash passwords and then let's do string text dot get text dot get and then we'll do all of that dot encode utf8 so utf8 all right so this will get the string i mean get the input turn it into a string to make sure we can encode it to utf8 and then hash it so this will give us the key that the user entered and then we just have to check it with the database so we do cursor.execute cursor.execute uh, parentheses select i mean not parentheses sorry uh, quotation marks select star so that means like select all from master password that's the name of our collection where id is equal to one since our id will always be one because we'll only have one master password and recovery key so the, also the id is equal to one make sure that no one can just insert a password and then use that uh, and see all your data so yeah id is equal to one and recovery key is equal to question mark and then what you want to do is just add comma and then you just put the brackets and then parentheses and then recovery key check so this will check for the recovery key and then we do return cursor dot fetch all so basically this will check if the recovery key is the one that we stored in the database so next what we want to do is let's do definition in def check recovery key so this will be when they actually press the button so here what we want to do is checked is equal to get recovery key so this will basically run the whole function we just made and then all we have to do is if checked so if checked so that means if the recovery key actually exists we go to the first time screen so making a new master password and else we just text dot delete zero so this basically just resets the text input so like it shows that it was the wrong key and then we just do label one so the lab label where we put no uh, no text in earlier we change the text to equal wrong key wrong key all right guys so at this point my mic broke but you want to just delete the done function and you want to change the button to uh, call the new function uh, check recovery key instead of the done function and then you can change the button text to whatever you want you just want to make sure that here in the get recovery in the check recovery key function make sure you have the parentheses at the end of get recovery key and also make sure you have the key variable when you open the recovery key screen so anyways now let's get to encrypt encrypting our actual data the website username and passwords so right off the bat what we want to do is um, we want to create a new variable backend so we're going to do backend is equal to backend underscore uh sorry default underscore backend default underscore backend boom there we go and then we want to do salt so this can be whatever you want it to be i'm just going to do two four 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 and next what you want to do is you want to make adf is equal to just copy this text up here 
so this will be basically kind of like an object but it's more of a very um, a function sorry so you want to do algorithm is equal to hashes dot sha256 so this just creates a random sha256 hash to encrypt the data and then you want to do length is equal to 32 and then salt is equal to salt and then iterations is equal to let's do 100,000 and then backend backend is equal to backend there we go just make sure you have commas after everything we're done with that now now you just want to find the last variable encryption key is equal to whatever it doesn't matter what's after this you just want to define the variable sorry about that next what we want to do is we want to make two new functions def encrypt and def decrypt so in the encrypt function what you're going to do is you're going to do return burnet and then you're going to put t dot encrypt and then message there we go and here uh, in the encrypt up here, you want to put in message two dots bytes and then e two dots bytes and then you want to put a little arrow up here arrow bytes so this just transfers the bytes into the function and then actually you can just copy this whole thing Put it down here change the key to token and change this to token so this will change this to decrypt too so this will encrypt and this will decrypt so we should be good here next what you want to do is uh, you want to scroll down you want to go all the way down to our first time screen so this is where we will first save our encryption key. So you want to go down here to next to recovery key. Let's just do global encryption key. So this is just referencing to the variable we made at the beginning. Just so we can edit that on, on basically the whole script. And then you want to do encryption key is equal to base 64.url safe underscore b64 decode. I mean encode, sorry, encode, uh, and then parentheses, kdf, so this uses the object we make, made earlier, dot derive, and then text, dot get, text, dot get, dot encode, boom, there we go, uh, now you want to copy this right here, and you want to put it into our login screen, so right here right after we get check our password you want to put this right here perfect so next after we have our encryption key we want to actually encrypt some data so go down to the add entries and here what you want to do copy this and you do encrypt encrypt and then parentheses pop up text.1.encode because we want it to be in byte format dash encryption key not dash sorry uh, comma so you want to just copy this three times change it to text2 two and text2 two. so this encrypts the password username and website and then we just want to go down here this is where we actually display the data so we want to change this to decrypt and in parentheses, uh, you just want to take this array, array i, and then one, since this is the first one, and then comma, encryption. So you can copy this for all three. Boom, and then boom, and boom. Change this to three, two, and one. There we go. And also, couple more things before we test everything out here in the array i had some people telling me that there was some errors what you can do is you just do if um 
if length of uh, the array is equal to zero. So if length, sorry, if length array is equal to zero. So you want to put this in some parentheses right here. So if length array is equal to zero, then we're gonna break. Also make sure to have double equal sign. So this just makes sure that if the array has nothing in it, it's just not gonna go through all this. And uh, yeah, I think we should be all good to go. So uh, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. All right, so let me delete the database first. Delete, there we go. Choose master password, I'll just do test. Test, copy this key. And then let's add some stuff, test, test. And then let's do test 22 just to make sure. Perfect. And if I go here, I'm gonna go reset password, put the key in. I can reset the password. Uh, sorry, I typed the wrong password. Let me just do this. Boom, there we go. And then we get a new key. Copy that. And we still have our data. And just to prove it's uh, encrypted, uh, let's go to SQLite Viewer. You can choose a file. So this is the password vault database. We choose that. Here, let me just refresh here. Choose this file. And then this is our encrypted password encrypted recovery key and this is our vault so it's encrypted in bytes and unless they have your master password they won't be able to decrypt this and yeah that's about it guys and one more thing if you guys want to remove these print statements you can just control f and search for print and boom there we go move it right there and they won't print these anymore Anyways, guys, that's about it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or uh, want me to make anything else. Now your password vault should be safe. Your website, username, and passwords will be encrypted. And your password is with SHA256. And you have a recovery key in case you forget it. So, uh, yeah, let me know anything you want me to code or make. Or if you have any suggestions in the comments. And uh, see you guys next time. Bye.